Feldenkrais developed both awareness through movement and functional integration concurrently in the early 50s. And um, as I said, they are fundamentally the same principles, um, which is that our sensory kinesthetic experience through movement is the primary source of information which our brains use to learn and change. And there's, there's lots of research showing this. You could call it the kind of the primacy of sensory kinesthetic information and that that's what the brain is attracted to. Because of the lack of friction, she easily moves in relationship to the roller and look compared to that. In other words, this hip has limits in how easily it can descend, how she can move that left hip away from her ribs. And so let's forget about that. And we'll just go this way. Information is necessary for the nervous system to alter, change what it does. And that involves the sensing, the feeling of kinesthetic difference. And so by differentiation, I mean that um, the ability to sense differences, small differences, incremental differences, is at the heart of the, the brain creating change. So here with Suzanne, I'm moving her very, very small amount, but you could already see that the bending to her left is very inhibited and very different than going to the right. It makes it very difficult to not have that oppositional movement, right? And of course, with my hands, I can go a little bit back and a little bit, oh, I'm not gonna go forward. But the pressure being used is very small, very minimal. Now. If, if I wanted to ask Suzanne to lift one arm, which arm would I ask her to lift? In other words, which would be the easiest arm for her to lift? I think so. So lift your right arm. Just that way. Just, just, no, 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 just leave it there. And you, you, each time I do this or we do this, you lengthen that arm a tiny bit. That's right. That's right. You catch it. So just to uh, preempt what he's doing, we have not made one movement in the direction in which she would experience herself as having some difficulty, right? Not one movement has been done where she didn't feel herself to somehow be acceptable, not just acceptable, pleasurable to herself, that she could accept what I was asking her to do and feel successful, feel competent and comfortable in herself. And not only that, we can crank up the difficulty, right? And do, we can do it fast, we can do it slow, we can do it, that's right, we can come off the roller. 
So it's not dependent on slow, right? It's not dependent on small movement. And then we see, oh, she remembers what that was like before. Do you? The more work you do, the less you're able to make these distinctions or differentiations in sensation. And if, if you, want your, you want the nervous system, your nervous system, the nervous system of the person you're working with, and I don't mean to depersonalize the person by calling them a nervous system, but if the goal is to help this person to feel things that might be essential for changing their habits. Well, you want to set things up in a way that fosters or enables that, that ability to differentiate. And so the, the, in both awareness through movement and the method, we have certain principles that we use where we do the movement slowly to enable the nervous system the time that it needs, we reduce the effort. So all things which you've probably inferred or gathered explicitly from these, this wonderful Feldenkrais Summit.